Alright, welcome back. So today we have just refactored everything and we're going to show you the little steps that we did to create a character controller which allows us to refactor everything and basically make this game a game. Alright, so without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing we have is a game loop which has all its function and logical loops inside it. The next thing we did was we added different types of components inside that game. And what we did was we just just uh, threw it inside the logic through a component basis. Now, this would be fine if we had a good structure, but we don't. And let's say if we added more, it's just going to be more stuff into the game. So the solution would be that we have one class that represents holding all these as a reference and then we have everything stuck in one area so it's very local and very easy to lo logicize and then after that what we can do is very simple we could just push all that logic into the game loop now this makes it all easier to read and very easy to look at so starting off we're going to have the character controller as a class and what we're going to do is we're just going to add some references and some node connections so we can get the node from our editor and we can connect it to our class composition or pointer then the next thing we're going to do is go into the database and we're going to add a few things the first thing we're going to add is an item type which allows us to choose what type of item and gun mods just takes the structure of the gun that we had before nothing too fancy Next thing we're going to have is a gun property class inside our database, which allows us to take those values from the database property and send it to the class that it wants. Now I could go on talking about how I did this and the steps to replicate this, but I believe that gets too long in terms of refactoring. So the basics are, let's just talk about the logic changes. In the character controller, the first thing we did was we got the animation and connected it from the nodes and then we initialized everything inside it. Then on the update, we put everything that's on update in front and then we added that if the inventory is not open, we move. So example, that if we press W, our character will start to walk or show the animation of walking. So that's the simple part after that. If we press Q, we can open the inventory or not open it, close it, depending on the boolean that we added in there. Then we also have that if we press E, we can check the interaction and the item from the database. And when we do that, we check if the item is a weapon, we give it to the gun property. And if it's not, we add it to the inventory. Then speaking of the gun, if we're holding the gun, then what we can do is we have a certain amount of extra procedures that we can do. So something example like if we press the left button, it shoots, right button aims, and releasing it makes it equal. Next is pressing Y, and what we did here is if we're not holding the gun, we pick it up or hold it, and if we're holding the gun, we put it back. And for physics, it's the same. If the inventory is not open, then we can just do our moving logic inside the brackets. Then the last thing is just a bunch of helper functions that just make it a lot cleaner and smoother to look at. After adding everything, we can see that our game is working exactly as how we had with our buttons, pressing the inventory, opening it up, and then throwing it works exactly the same way as it did before. And then when we pick it up, everything's the exact same. As we press the Y button, we get the gun and then right click is aiming it, shooting it. We shoot the bullet and you could see the ammo on the right. So with all that done, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.